Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. I am very excited. Today, we have Omar Saeed, who's co-founder and CEO of Ties.com, Scarves.com, Allen.com. It started in 2000, and they started off literally fulfilling orders out of a co-founder's living room, and they've managed to grow into the world's largest online men's and women's accessories retailer. Omar, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. Very excited. I've listened to a few of your, um, actually a lot of your interviews, and uh, excited to be on here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. And you know what? Um, Looking at you makes me want to up my game. You know, because you dress for success, you dress impeccably looking at your, your pictures online. And, and now we were commenting before, I was like, obviously, you know, being the, the founder of ties.com, scarves.com, I'm going to have to have you tell me what you're wearing here. So you have to explain the tie and, sure. and the pin there. Yeah. So the tie is a ties.com, uh, uh, a cherry blossom tie. So you can go on. That's one of our uh, really uh, popular seller, sellers actually one of those ties where no matter where it is that I wear it and no matter where I go at least get one person who approaches me to tell me either they love this tie or that they want to buy it and where they get it from so it's one of our popular ties I'm really really uh, happy about this design so excited so Omar since it's Inspired Insider uh, my question is um, what's been the lowest moment and what's been the proudest moment um, what's been the lowest moment professionally um, so I came into a company that had, um, you know, an existing culture and I don't want to say that the culture was stagnant, but the, it, it was there and the bifurcation of what the culture was and where I wanted to take, um, was, um, in many ways apart. And there, there were idiosyncratic things that were absolutely important to me personally that I wanted to bring in that a lot of people, when I came on, applauded and wholeheartedly took on and embraced, and that's what they were waiting for. But, you know, I had an existing staff that was very, like, staunchly didn't believe in it, you know. Like um, what? A, what was something that you wanted to bring in that... Okay. Uh, so I wanted to focus on social media, and I had somebody, um, I'm not going to name names, but I had somebody who, you know, pretty high up in the company, um, getting paid a lot of money um, and was part of our brain trust. He literally looked at me in the eye and said, social media is a fad and go away. And I looked at him and I thought to myself, either this guy's a genius or he's an idiot. Um, so, you know, that's like a, you, when you have moments like that and you think to yourself, okay, I need to make an, a decision immediately about this person because this is, you know, because of their position and because of their influence in the company, they're going to affect other people. And so this is not... If, if I'm rowing in this direction, this person wants to row in this other direction, or he doesn't right. believe that he should be right. rowing in this direction, that's difficult. Even if you convince them, or even if you pull the, you know, your rank card, if if they don't believe in your mission and they don't believe in what you're doing, that's yeah. they're wholehearted. Their their heart isn't in it, right? So they're not. Right. They don't have the two piece. They don't. Right. They don't have passion in the company. Yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, that, that was probably something that was. Yeah. Uh, and they could so, sidetrack other people. You know, yeah. it depends on their personality. If if they're vocal about it, then they yeah. start pulling people towards their end and then away from... from and it. it's polarizing, right? So then you've like, now that you're developing this culture, right. now you have this polar. But nevertheless, you were asking about my low point. That was probably my lowest point because um, one of the questions I was asked when we were going through this process, uh, somebody asked me, you know, what's the least favorite thing that you'd like to do? And I think um, this is probably true for everybody, but for me personally... It's to fire people, right? You don't. No, nobody wants to come in and fire people. Nobody right. wants to fire people in general. And so that's something that, you know, um, I had said to them. And so then I was looking at this like a, a thing where I was looking at, okay, well, these people, I need to cycle through them. If I really believe in this Jack Welchian way of running a business, like these are the wrong people for me. This is not the right thing. And yeah. I want to be respectful about the process, but I also have a fiduciary responsibility to the, you know, uh, board members to uh, uh, people who have, you know. The stakeholders of the company. So, what do I need to do? I've been brought on to make decisions. Yeah. Um, 
but that was the lowest point for me. Yeah. Um, it was really, really tough to make those decisions and say, you know, like, listen, this is the direction that we're going to. And then there's, you know, of course, I'm not perfect. You have this, this self doubt. I mean, even you know, you and I talking, you know, this is the first interview I'm doing, and I'm super nervous about it. And I'm, I've probably repeated myself a million times, uh, saying the same stuff. I'm going to watch this and probably. It's only internally that you think that. Yeah, you know. uh, I'm probably going to watch this in shame for hours. Uh, <laughs> it's going to take me like six hours to watch 40 minutes. Uh, <laughs> Because I'm going to pause it every two minutes. Uh, but yeah, that was the lowest point for me to. So you did you end up getting rid of that person? I, I got rid of a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. And we brought on people who uh, who believed in the who were part of the two P's. Yeah. But I also wanted people who were uh, who were also better a better culture fit. There were people who left the company who weren't necessarily bad. They just weren't part like. What I wanted to build, they weren't a part of. They didn't yeah. necessarily believe in the vision. They right. didn't believe, oh, we should really divest from wild ties and really focus on ties.com. They really believed. And that's there's nothing I can do about yeah. it. I, I I know now that was a good decision for me. But back then, yeah. you have these moments of self doubt, like, oh, my God, what if I'm making a bad decision? You know, I have people here who have children. I have people who have mortgages. Uh, those decisions, I, I don't take lightly. I spend many, many sleepless nights, right. many nights pulling all-nighters. Um, uh, a lot of gray hairs, um, but you know, like ultimately, uh, like I said, I, I think it's at some point the universe always finds a way to test your result, right? So, but as long as you show up every single day and uh, grit, right? That's what it comes down to. And, and I think you asked me, I said, what, what is the one thing that you want people to take away? And I think we talked about, a little bit about talent acquisition and talent yeah. retaining. But one of the other things I want people to take away here is grit. You absolutely always have to have grit. Like if you mm. have grit, uh, the one fact mm. there's a really beautiful TED talk, and I'm I don't know why because maybe I have to, had too much coffee. I can't remember her name. <laughs> Angela, Angela something. She Is has it a TED really talk about grit. A, yeah, about grit. She says it most beautifully. So uh, she worked on Wall Street, and then she she went and worked for Angela a Duckworth. I think so. Yes, yes. So she left and went and um, uh, uh, went and worked for. Uh, public school system, then went and did a PhD. And she, so she did this study on what you know elements that make people successful. And so she interviewed and she went through all this process and she went, um, she went to uh, these schools and, um, and she figured out the one element that makes somebody successful, the one thing that kept on coming back, it wasn't intelligence, it wasn't uh, humor, mm. it wasn't good looks, it wasn't really? hype, it was grit. So if you have this unwavering, um, yeah. If you have this like unwavering, you know, it's funny you say this, Omar, because yeah. yesterday my wife told me to get the book Grit. There's, she wrote a book. I think it's The Power of Grit or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. And she told me to get this. I need to listen to it. My homework is I need to listen to it, summarize it, report back on it, and for purpose of the kids. Yes. For, for raising the kids of yes. grit. And that, like you were saying, I had no idea. That, that was the author so you just said that but that's my homework for oh, my wife awesome. to yes. have to do that so. that's awesome I, I love that your wife uh, that your wife challenges you and forces you to like get out of your comfort zone yeah. uh, my wife and I do the same thing that's awesome um, but yeah that's a great in fact you know what's funny my wife is the one who turned me on to the TED talk really we're married to smart women that's uh, that's I give all credit yeah there. yeah uh, that's fantastic that's awesome um, yeah, my wife turned me on to, to Angela Duckworth and uh, to her TED Talk. But grit is something that I think I've always internalized, but I've never been able to sort of come up with that right sort of word that summarizes it all. Right. Uh, but having grit is really important. You know, waking up every single day in the face of like, you know, you come into work and sales are down, culture is bad, or people are unhappy, and, you know, like you know there's an onslaught of like, you know, things you got to fix. And, you know, meanwhile... You know, the company's hemorrhaging. I'm sure a lot of people have had similar stories, but yeah. how do you get past that? You know, how do you every single night go to bed, you know, at 10, 11 o'clock at night because um, you've been up, like looking at the next campaign that's being pushed out and you're measuring and, and then you wake up the next day, you come on, and people are on, like great, right? So yeah. that's. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks you for mentioning that. Yeah. 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 Um, so on the flip side, Omar, the proudest moment. What's been one of the proudest business moments for you? Um, so many things. Uh, I think uh, one of our proudest moments was when we realized we'd made the right decision with 
um, switching over and focusing all of our um, all of our efforts and divesting from you know neckties and not because neckties.com is a great domain, right? Um, so that was a tough decision. Um, divesting from wild ties. Um, another proud moment for us was when we uh, realized we'd made the right decision about controlling our supply chain, and um, um, that was probably um, uh, a, a really a, a great moment for us to sort of um, sit back and reflect on um, reflect on this uh, really great accomplishment. Um, uh, what else? Uh, I mean, sort of a lot of wins, you know. Um, and this is this doesn't sound like a big deal because there's a lot of softwares you can deploy now that does this for you. But for us to take our site uh, and make it responsive, because we do our own software, you know, Shopify does it for you. You don't have to worry about it. Right. Uh, Volusion, I think, big commerce. All so, these what people. what made you decide to go with your own internal software as opposed to like Shopify or one of these other ones? Yeah, well, when we first started, I think like Volusion or Shopify, or, or no, I'm sorry, not Volusion. Like uh, Big Shopify. Commerce or something? Big Commerce, yeah. I think they were the only ones in the space. Or Magento is Magento a big or one. Yeah. 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 So I think they were the only ones in the space, if they were even in the space. But we started so early, we just, there was nothing yeah, there. Us, you had um, to. It was sort of de facto for us to do it. And there, I mean, Shopify wasn't there. But um, even now, I think. It gives us a competitive advantage over everybody else who's out there because we we have such a customizable you know platform you know it's written in multi multi languages and so it's um, and we can make it as we can optimize it on a code level anywhere we want and we can add any features we want anywhere we want we're not constricted to anything so I think that gives us really a great competitive advantage. So uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, what's important is good. This is a really great question, you know, like what were some of our big wins? But I think um, one of the things you were asking about, you know, your employee happiness, like what do you do? One of the things that we try to do is celebrate these small ha- small wins, no matter how small they are, right? Sure. So I don't know if you can tell or not, but like we have sort of like alcohol. I uh, did see you that. Know, <laughs> so you make people do that. And single malt scotches and whiskeys there. Um, but yeah, we try to celebrate any little wins we have. You know, like even if we launch a feature that we've been working on two, three weeks, because it's a small win, and you should always take the time to celebrate those wins, no matter what. And in life, wins are so hard to come by, um, or rather, um, the free f- frequency of which the wins come by are you know right. in between. And you know, a lot of it is really sort of the drudgeries of going home and. You know, like your little one is sick, and you got to pick up milk, and you forgot to pick it up, and you know those things. Like it's 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 easy to fall into this like trap. Of, like oh, man, now I got to go do this, or um, you know this this didn't happen, oh, and 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 the bank like didn't transfer the funds, or you know like all the stuff that like you deal mm-hmm. with, and like when these little things happen, it's so easy to just be like, all right, let's move on to the next project. But like take the time, you know, to stop and smell the flowers. But you take the time and you stop and say, hey, you know, like. Great job, development. This is a really great product, and thank you, design, for putting all those assets together. Marketing, thank you for doing a great job of of, of launching this, and you know, like th- thank you for everybody else for for taking the time to you know help test this feature and push it out. Without you, we can't do it. You know, and you spend yeah. even if it's like 20, 30 minutes, a half an hour, you spend like talking about the features, and you know that's that's really important to celebrate all your wins, and not just your big wins, because. You know, what's a really big win? You end up raising a round, or, you know, that's a really great right. reason to go out and like celebrate and yeah. have drinks. But yeah. Small wins are equally it's as important. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I remember talking to one founder. That's what they said. They said they never really sell They had this bottle of champagne when they hit, you know, a certain number in their company, whatever it is, seven figures or something. And then, yeah. then that became bigger. And then they never broke open that bottle. And, right. and they still said they hadn't. When we had talked, <laughs> so yeah, so it it, it, make, it makes yeah. it like uh, it, especially if your goal is set so high or you have a, a hard time getting traction to get yeah. to that goal, you just keep it moving makes it, it that forward. Much more daunting, right? Yeah. It makes it that much more daunting to get that goal. So then you start, you know, like it's really great to have these really great goals, but all those milestones to which um, that help you get on there should also be celebrated. And yeah. I'm not saying you should celebrate mediocrity by no means, because I talk about some blog is. I am not one that celebrates mediocrity, but nevertheless, it's really great to say, "Hey, you know, our vision is well, uh, our vision is this, and our goals are these." But how great is it that we're capable of uh, growing our customer base? Right? Uh, how great is it that we are able to uh, uh, create all these five-star reviews? How great is it that we just launched these brand new 
uh, line of neckties. How great is it that we just launched this um, seamless feature on ties.com? How great is it that we just launched a responsive uh, site that for a company that had been around since 1979? You know, it, I, I'm really proud of Allen, for instance. So ties.com is wonderful sort of evolution. But Allen was a company that we bought that had been around for a long time. Yeah. And we bought it from, I think, like second or third generation. And yeah. the acquisition was, but when we took over the company, like no, very little product development, uh, no control over supply chain. In fact, a very convoluted supply chain and a very convoluted uh, process, um, very complicated sales process, um, virtually no retail whatsoever. And we brought this thing, this puppy, like, you know, we basically incubated it and like have dumped it into what it is today, and we're very proud of that. And we're competing against really big boys, right? So we're competing against uh, Vineyard Vines, you know, really great company, great culture, tons of money, tons of outside money, and, um, geographically in the right place. Um, but yet we're competing against them and doing a really good job of it. So, how long did it take Omar from the beginning discussion to acquire the company when you first started discussing it to finalizing the process? Uh, Scarfs.com or Allen? Uh, Allen. Allen, yeah. Because um, when I was reading the um, the background on it, it's I think the company was from like 1970s or something. Yeah, 79. Yeah, and so it was a company, family company. Family company yeah. uh, had been op- operated by a husband and wife who were really wonderful. Had done a really great job. Um, and well, we got a phone call. So uh, we got a phone call uh, from the then. Um, owner or proprietor, rather, and he was like, "Listen, I am in the midst of, you know, sort of a buyout. We have some inventory. They don't want to take my inventory. You're interested in this?" And we're like, uh, I, I, "I remember when somebody walked into my office and gave me this story." And I looked at her and I said, um, "Would they sell to us?" And she goes, "I don't know. I can ask." I said, "Well, hold on." So I, back then, we used to have offices. There wasn't all this. Um, so we're in the same space. We used to have sort of offices, and my office was across the lobby from Morgan's. And we had um, basically, I had a glass wall, and he had a glass wall. So we always looked at each other, and we used to yell at each other all the time. So if people like walked in, people would just hear us yelling. Uh, actually, across the lobby, so we were across the lobby, we'd always yell at each other. And so I look over, I'm like, "Hey, I need to come talk to you." He goes, "All right." So I literally like walked across the lobby and sat down. I'm like, "Hey, this is happening." He goes, "We got a flight in New York." So you had like immediately had really? the same thinking I did. So we called him up and said, Listen, don't sign anything. We're going to fly out there. I'm going to have a conversation with you. So we flew out and he met us. And like we walked into this uh, the steakhouse and just had a conversation. We're like, Let's, would you be interested in selling us? And this is, you know, we'd like to know. We'd like to take a look at under the hood and want to know what it is. And um, I think we made that decision on the weekend and within like mm. two weeks, we were signing paperwork. Really? Um, because we were, so um, our growth is in, dependent on acquisitions because we don't. We don't have the money for it, right? Um, but what we really wanted was the brand itself because we really believed in, in their mission and we believed in their product and we uh, thought it was a really great product. And um, it was it was important for us to, uh, if we wanted to continue participating in building a brand and we wanted to acquire that brand as part of the Wild Attire family, we wanted that to be part of Tice.com. It was important for us to uh, make uh, make that move. And yeah, I think like three, four weeks, no longer than that. Um, to make that acquisition. That's crazy, Omar. So in that amount of time, had you or him had experience with that? How do you even know how to structure that type of thing? Yeah. So it, you're, there, there are different ways about going through it. I thought you were going to say like eight months or something. Like that's what I thought you were going to say. No, no. Uh, so sometimes you make strategic acquisitions, other times you make it for revenue, right? So right. Um, we knew that if the right deal comes along, you make the acquisition because for us it may. Um, so we, so I, you know I read a lot because I told you this. Um, so I, I, I read a lot. And um, Jeff Bezos is uh, probably somebody I read a lot about. Um, so any, anything that he is in, I listen to. And, um, and you know his philosophy is that they buy purpose-driven companies, um, and they buy companies that make strategic sense to them. Yeah. So in other words, they're really good at supply chain, right? Nobody does supply chain better than them. Yeah. So 
they buy companies, Zappos, Quitsy, they buy these companies because um, Quitsy fit their model, right? They could take Quitsy, apply what they do really well, which is logistics, and then basically absorb all of its users, right? So it's a very simple model. It made it makes strategic sense for them to buy these purpose-driven companies. So uh, what uh, Quitsy wanted to do with diapers.com is uh, make sure that diapers are readily available or any children's paraphernalia or parents. Um, uh, there, it was like the go-to uh, website for parents. Um, if you had a child between X amount of age in 2004, or I'm sorry, 2010 through 2014 uh, and beyond, 2000, yeah, you were, you were aware of Quitsy. You knew that diapers.com existed and you knew it. So they had done this really great job of marketing themselves and putting themselves in front of people. And so Amazon bought them. Again, it was a strategic pers- uh, purchase for them. But same thing for Zappos, right? Zappos did something that they did really well, which is customer service yeah. and, and user delivery. They really did a better job than Amazon did in many ways. And so for Amazon, it made sense to make a strategic purchase. And so for me, as soon as I saw this, I looked at it as a strategic opportunity because we, even at that time, that uh, at the time when we uh, went through the acquisition, we didn't have our supply chain, but I knew that we had a better supply chain process, especially when we had that initial conversation with him over the phone when I told him I wanted to come see him. I asked him a few questions. He was very forthright about it. And I realized, like, hey, we have a much better system put in place. And because I had, remember, sort of your long-term goals, because I had long-term goals about where I wanted to take it, I knew yeah. that I would do a better job of that process. And I would have greater control over this process and probably deliver a better quality product. And I was willing to take that bet. I was willing to take that risk and we took it out. Yeah. So you could see, okay, they're here, but with our process, we could plug in, plug that in and get them to a much higher level. Yeah. So if if it makes sense for you, for the business model that you're in, absolutely, you make that and, you know, um, of course, there's varying varying philosophies. Does it pull away from your own brand? Does it you know pull away from your attention? Absolutely, you have to consider all those things. But you can only make those considerations, you know, for yourself and for your own company. Yeah. yeah. So, Omar, I want to point people towards a couple of your sites so they can check them out. And then I have one last question. Um, and I don't know if I'll remember all of your sites, but I know there's ties.com, scarves.com, allen.com, a l y n n. Um, and then I think, what other ones do you have? I mean, uh, so we actually acquired another company recently, Infectious Wearables, um, also a really great niche brand uh-huh. um, that I've been around, for, I think, since the 80s or 90s, uh-huh. I can't remember. Um, uh, but that that site needs to go through a lot of love, tender, what is it tender love and care. Uh, Infectious Wearables, I think it's oh. iawearables.com. Okay. So Infectious Wearables produces neckties. Uh, for a very s- s- uh, specific segment of the market. So um, people who are in healthcare and they wear, let's say, um, you know, a, a Zika tie. So it has a DNA of a Zika virus on the tie itself. Okay. Um, very, very <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that is very, like, do you very, want a life-threatening a disease on your tie? Like, we will make it for you. <laughs> yeah, we have that for you. Um, <laughs> so I, I wearables is the other That's one. Hilarious. Again, really great story behind it, and uh, we've known of the company and have worked with the company for a while. So it was, um, it was because we have you know what we do really well. It made sense for us to to make the uh, make the acquisitions. Uh, probably my blog is another thing. Um, I write quite not as often as I should, but I have a very personal goal. This this year, where I'm trying to publish at least two articles a week. That's all um, right. yeah. Yeah, and my goal is to um, help entrepreneurs uh, who are sort of in a similar stage as I am and um, are dealing with the same drudgeries as I am, and um, or as we have, rather, um, and talk about the things that are, you know, at, at some point you just have to focus and at some point you have to pay attention to things that are really important to you as opposed to everything else that's happening. Yeah. Um, you know, voice, uh, noise versus signal that Jason Freeman always talks about um, because in any situation it's much more important. I really want to champion this idea of like emotional intelligence. Uh, re- I mean, uh, what's a really great story of emotional intelligence? Um, Ariana Huffington um, just joined 
uh, the Uber board. And I think what the CEO said of Uber, he was like, listen, I need some emotional intelligence on my board. So we asked Ariana. And it's a really great story, right? So it's this, um, uh, it, it goes to show you how important EQ is um, in relations to IQ. Because right. I think a lot of companies focus on IQ and not necessarily on EQ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and then Sock Genius, does that have a separate site? I, I see that takes up a lot of real estate on yes. ties.com. You know, yeah. like when you look at it, I'm sure there was a strategic decision there, but, you know, if you look at the upper, th- you know, the top third of your site, it's yeah. one big header and it's just Sock Genius. Yeah. So tell me uh, about that. Uh, you know, earlier you asked the process that we go through for product development and yeah. Sock Genius is probably a really great story for that. And uh, if your listeners made it this far to listening to this, um, I'm sure they're going to enjoy the story. They only get the is- secret sauce at the end. <laughs> That took us eight months to develop that product when we went through a very, very rigorous process. Um, so my creative director and I um, took more of an active role in this process because A, it was a new product category that we were um, that we were introducing. He was very particular about the colors that we, that we were using, yeah. the uh, designs that we were using, and I was very particular about uh, the fit and feel. Right. So, Prior to this, I only used to wear Happy Socks, and for me, that was a really great brand, and I really liked the way it felt. So I always knew that if I ever wanted to do socks, that I wanted to do something that was better than that. I wanted something that um, gave me that same sense, uh, that same sensation, but it felt better. Because if I if I was ever going to make something, or if I was ever going to switch my socks, it was going to be for a better reason. And I feel like even with I think we're now in our third iteration. Um, I feel like even with our first iteration of those socks, we've done a really fantastic job, and it was up to par. And I can, you know, um, I can attest to that only because I wear them all the time. Yeah. Um, I even wear our production samples that come in, and you know, don't even make it to production. I still have them, and I cover them, and I keep them. Um, so um, that went through a really rigorous process of like, you know, needle points and yeah. you know, type of. I'm content. looking at all of them right now. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, he was really focused on the color and the design. Jeez, and, there's a lot. There's a lot of them. Yes, there's a lot. Holy cow. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's that's um, that's a category that has done well for us, and we're very happy with it. And we have tons of people who are really, really happy with those socks. And so, um, yes, it rightly deserves um, a lot of real estate, and we're um, happy to give it to it. Yeah, yeah, I figured there was a reason why... A sure. third of your site is, <laughs> it wasn't by chance. And talking to you, obviously, it's by measuring in the metrics. So, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for uh, sharing. Do you, have, you have one question that I hope you're going to ask me, but go on. Go ahead. What, what is that? Um, what is uh, a, a business idea that I'm not going to do anything with that I could just give Yeah. Out? So, a business idea, you know, I don't ask that enough. I should always ask that at the end. You should always ask that. Yeah, so a business idea that uh, someone else should steal. Yes. And so you're I not going to do anything with them, yeah. Yeah, uh, part, partly because I don't have uh, enough uh, focus to be able to do this. And also partly because I don't, uh, I'm don't. i not a uh, developer. Uh, so uh, either an extension or an actual chat app. I know there's tons of them. Um and how do you compete against WhatsApp, but uh, or Facebook now? But an app that allows you to insert memes. There's no insert app. memes. Insert memes. Yeah. So to where actually, like social media? No. So like, let's say you're, you know, my wife and I, we like meme each other all the time. But let's just say like you've just come across a really funny meme, or um, or <laughs> rather, is... like you're talking and there's like a meme in your head where you're like, dude, this would be perfect. I want to send this to my wife because we're having this conversation. And we're talking about this. I want to send this me. Uh, it'd be really great. Just the same way um, you can do that now uh, with, uh, what was it called? Memeify or whatever that app is, that, you, that extension. Um, I think even Twitter allows you to insert those. But um, having that, that um, or having a chat that allows you to do that, I, I love that idea. Um, and I think the other thing is uh, producing really great um, uh WordPress themes. So there's a lot of companies that produce a lot of themes, a lot of independent developers that develop a lot of themes. But the problem is, number one, the exclusivity of it, because I can come onto any site and be like, oh, that's, Shop- that's Shopify site, that's a, uh, that's a WordPress site, that's this, that's that. 
But producing something that A, you sell in very limited numbers, but B, are so unique in its design. Everybody does the same thing. You know, this big banner at the top, and, right. you know, sort of articles or products at the bottom. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, I think I use one. Um, I've customized a few things on my, on, my, on my blog, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. However, I, for the longest time, I think in like a lot of conferences I go to, there's uh, Rob Whaling. I don't know if you know him. He does um, MicroConf. Yeah, probably. Yeah, sugar. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So I remember this one year I was my company. I swear everybody I spoke to, I was like, hey, you're a developer. Why don't you develop this? This is here's an idea for you. Nobody took me on, and I, I happily will give this idea to anybody. But what if like you develop a really great theme um, that you sold to like a limited number of people, right? So let's say it, it's uh, a theme that you develop that you sell out like five seats. You know, so five people have it. So any given time, just three and a half people that use it. You know, three people use it sort of every single day. One person that has bought it but isn't using it, and then one person that like buys it and takes it down. And so you know, three and a half people use it any given time. So also, you're not going to run into this theme a lot, but you sell it at a higher price. I would be I would be happy to spend a lot more money, and I don't have to like devote my time to learning how to you know code something. You know, I don't have to like disturb my developers. I don't have to do any of that. But um, uh, yet I get to buy something at a higher price that nobody else has, but yet it's also very unique. And that's the thing. And if you you know if you've ever been to like these theme sites, they're a little different, but for the most part they're about the same. Yeah. Right. So yeah. um, you know and I don't even know whether or not that it's a marketplace anymore. Somebody's probably listening to this going, Oh my god, WordPress theme, what an idiot. But I, I've always I've always felt like that there's a lack of that in there because I've had personal struggles. Um, in fact at one point um, at one point, because I was like learning how to code, um, I was like uh, with a developer and like, you know, we coded my own site. I actually reached out to Neil Patel with this really cool site. I was like, hey, I'm going to rip off your site. He's like, no problem, go for it. He's like, do you want me to send you the files? I'm like, yeah, sure. So he like, like sent me a zip file. <laughs> site that really loved He's like, let me save you the trouble of ripping me off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I told him I'm like, hey, do they really love the site? Can I can I use it? He goes, no problem. Here's the zip file. So it's like, super cool. Um, but yeah, so if 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 there's anybody out there, or any of your listeners who are like solopreneurs or uh, wannapreneurs who want an idea, there it is. All right, yeah. Omar, this has been fantastic. Thank you for going through the journey and so many different um, things it takes to run and grow a business. Everyone should check out. Ties.com, Scarves.com, all the other .coms that they own that are four-letter domains. Um, you know, Omar, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's a pleasure.